Right, well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Genetic Genealogy of Ireland 2017. This is the fifth year that we've had these DNA lectures here at the Back to Our Past in the ODS in Dublin and Bulls Bridge. We are being live streamed on Facebook as we speak, so watch your language. Um, you're all very, very welcome. Uh, it's great to see a lot of familiar faces in the audience. And we're going to kick off uh, this morning uh, with Anne Marie Copeland. Now, Anne Marie is a professional genealogist living in Ireland, a member of the British chapter of the Association of Professional Genealogists, and her background is in education and business consultancy. She manages the social media for the Cork Genealogical Society and has the Cork Genealogical Society's Facebook pages with its private hub group for Cork DNA. She is also the administrator of the Cork Ireland Project, the Nagel Family Project, and the McGrath Plan Project, hosted at Family Tree DNA, who are our uh, very kind sponsors for these three days of DNA lectures. Uh, so please give a very warm welcome for Anne Marie Copeland. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, I'm going to start with where I am at the moment because this all started with one kit in 2013 on a very rainy February day. And this is where I am four years later. So, this is, I don't want to put you off, but this is what could happen to you if you actually get a kit from us today. Okay. Now, I must stress that eight, at least 85% of my research has been done the hard way. So this has been getting on the train in the holidays, popping down to the nearest archives with a list of things to find out, and you know, hanging around the microfiches and having a nervous breakdown, and coming back with one marriage record and being thrilled to bits. Okay, so this is the way I've done it. So my research, I've been doing it for a very long time, and um, there were certain areas, no-go areas, which I had to depart, and I thought, well, one day, perhaps. Um, my, one of my, one of my um, lines I got stuck on in 1790, I know it sounds far back, but I knew I could get further, and um, that was uh, a marriage of one of my great-grandmothers, time six, and she turned into uh, a very, very common name locally, and there was no way I was going to be able to pick her out from anybody else. So I decided to have a look at the um, maternal DNA, so that's grandmother's line, and I'll be talking about that in a little while. Um, I, I, I was thrilled, I watched um, a programme on, um, from, uh, on BBC about the uh, Seven Daughters of Eve by Brian Sykes, who was working out of Oxford University. Now, he's, um, he fell out of favour a little while ago, but if you can get his book, it's fascinating to see how they, um, how they actually understood the genome and how they worked with it to make the, the, um, the migration of the human species from Africa amazing. Really good read, though. Fabulous. I mean, he can't do it down. It's great. So, um, I thought, right, I'll go for the term DNA line. I met Morris over a pint, and he said, oh, you want to do this? So I came in for the test, and when I got sat down, I was spoken, I said, have you tried the family finder? And I said, what's that? Oh, we can give you um, results on all the lines. And I said, what, even on my dad's side? She said, oh, yeah, yeah. So I was sad, I was said to myself. So, um, so um, I got results back, and uh, I didn't recognize my results. I had got Eastern European, I had got Arabic. So it was a Saturday, so I got hold of somebody, I, one of my friends on Facebook, who's like a genealogist, a genetic genealogist, and I said, look, I've got the wrong kit back, what do I do? And he said, well, have another look at it. <laughs> and yes, um, I found one of my school friends on it, fifth cousin. I found another name, and then all my line that I had researched, all the locations were like, and I thought, well, that's it. Um, Eastern European, who knows where that's come from, it's here. Um, so uh, I couldn't find, I couldn't peel out the Irish lines at all, I just couldn't do it because I've got Irish on both sides. So I thought well, the best thing to do is if I can get hold of people who are also looking at the locations where I want to look, if we can talk to each other, perhaps I can make sense of what I've got. So um, I had a look at the GenMatch Facebook group and worked out how they were doing it and then I set myself up on the, uh, as a cork um, 
a researcher, and I put a group together, and I went really hardcore. It was quite funny because looking at it now, I wouldn't have done it like this. But what I said was, you have to have an established tree in Cork. Never mind Cork Island on the US records. I want a tree in Cork, and I want to know where you are in Cork. And have you got DNA testing? And you've got to have an autosomal test, which I'll come back to. And if you have, and you're a real person, you can in my group. Okay, so I've really, really narrowed it down quite a lot, you know. Um, so it's a private group. There was an awful lot of conversations. We didn't, you know, we were all driving blind, basically. Awful lot of conversations about what we were doing, how were we doing it. Somebody had got some information which was useful, so we all shared it. And um, the DNA Corky group, now I've got about, I'd say a good eight or nine people building their own groups now out of that. So they got, they got, you know, oh yeah, we can do this. Um, got one lady who started her own Y-DNA group in Cork for her surname in a very small area. And that's actually now going forward to the clans of Ireland for, um, you know, confirmation that it is a distinct clan within that surname. So this is four years down the line. This is the potential of DNA. It's amazing. Um, I also straight away joined the ISOC because they got stuff that I needed and I came to GDR 13 to find out what was going on in Ireland. So where I am now is I'm the local contact in the south of east of Ireland. I have a bag of DNA kits in my little bag, in my car, and anybody who looks slightly interested, I'm giving them out. And I also get phone calls saying, I hear you have DNA kits, can I meet you somewhere for coffee? <laughs> so I go in and I'm, I'm building out DNA kits in hotel rooms and things, so I'm a bit strange. Anyway, so um, that's what I'm, I'm one of the kids, the Paddy is up in Clare, he does the same thing, and uh, we've also got uh, Northern Ireland, they, they got the same. So we've got three points in Ireland you can get your kits from. You don't pay me, you pay online, but you can collect your kit, it saves postage, and you also get a free consultation with me at the same time. Um, the, and locally, my clan chief for the number R clan, um, lives locally and he said to me, oh, do you fancy doing a bit of DNA at our DNA gathering event, and our gathering event, and uh, I said, yeah, okay. So he, he's a PR person, okay? So he was talking to the newspapers locally and said, oh, we're going to have a bit of DNA at the, at the gathering next year. So the following week, newspaper headline, McGrath Clan DNA Extravagance. <laughs> First project for the planet, yeah, we said, oh, well, we're going to have to do it now, you know, we can't just talk about it, so we had to set it up. And um, we, um, we claimed the DNA project that was sitting asleep in family tree DNA. So all the name, most of the names are in family tree DNA in the Y project, but you need to go and, uh, and adopt one. So we adopted it and we started all our, all, I'd say 80% of the kids in there are actually out of the, the gathering. So if you're actually thinking about doing a family or a surname gathering, you can really, you know, accelerate it um, by using family tree DNA wine. Um, I also took on the Nagels because the Nagels, I'm not a Nagel as far as I know, but they are quite a discreet group. They work out of North Cork, they term, it's uh, an anglo non surname, and they all seem to have the same first names. Um, and they're very, very easy to track because it's quite an unusual surname. It doesn't seem to get too many variants on it. So I've adopted them and I've got another couple of admins who are actually enables running it. So what you can do is you can set stuff up and then if somebody's interested, you can, you can pull them in and train them up and, and move on. So there's cascade learning going on. There's peer-to-peer -peer learning going on. It's, very, it's working really quickly. And we are actually learning from each other. So if you are actually taking on DNA as part of your toolkit, you will be contributing your information and your expertise to the whole pool. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's very exciting to see how it's moving so quickly in Ireland. So what I've done is, um, I've done the family finder. I've also done ancestry because I've got my tree on ancestry, although it's private. And I've done the maternal DNA with family tree DNA. I've, now, I'm not going to talk about living DNA because it's actually on a different platform. And for the purposes of family research, you're going to get frustrated very quickly with it. But you can upload your raw DNA to them, but I'll talk about that later. And 
wonderful jug match, I'll come back to that later. So this is what you can do with one kit, okay? And no relatives. I still haven't got any relatives in my, my own matches. I'm still looking for them. My relatives are very well, difficult. So, um, so why do it? Okay, first of all, fabulous. The lines I've done and researched back to 1780, and I've got the letters, I've got them all, I've got the births, the marriages and deaths. The people I've been working with, you know, the people you talk to on Rooms Web and Rooms Chat, and the people you keep emailing you with different email addresses and you keep getting excited because you think it's something new. They, those people who are testing, they're popping up in my research. And one of my fourth cousins is actually a friend now. We've come smack straight on to where we predicted we were going to be. And we've pulled in other kits. What you do is you match other people, and then you get some kids floating about who match both of you. And all of a sudden, they, they're your relatives, but all of a sudden, you're pulling them into your tree. So firstly, I say, do it to confirm your own research. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, this is the big job. Find the gaps. They'll say, no, I did. I was so proud of myself. I don't read the tree. I don't follow the men. When the women got married, I'd lost interest. And all my matches are three women. I've got no surname matches at all. So if you're if you have got daughters in the in your you know, you're you descended from uh, a couple and you're then you're descended from one of the sons, the daughters marry, they only keep that surname for a generation. Their children then have got a new surname. And unless you, you follow those surnames through, you know, that you lose them. And these are the people you will match to. Okay? Um, brick wall ancestry, fabulous, definitely. And um, all of a sudden, groups of people will pop up together and you will have some areas, new areas for research, which will hopefully tie into where you're, you're, you're bricking. Um, the, in Ireland, you have to do it. You have to do it. If you've got Irish lines, you have to do it. Because the documentation, you know, it's like, I think mean, where, where, where I'm in Cork, it's who you know and where it is. Not that I've got it, it's who you know. So, um, you know, we, we, we know there are books floating about, we knew where they were in 1990, where they are now is another matter. So, it's, you know, if, you, if you're doing um, research with poor areas for documentation, you'll be picking up um, cousins in the US or in uh, Australia who have the family stories, who brought the records over with them, who know what they're looking at. Um, researching the female lines I've just talked about. Uh, right, so, um, New skills. I've cracked a brick wall, not with records, but by using the skills that I'm using to research my DNA matches. Okay? Um, first of all, you're getting a new set of people to work with. So it's not good old Sue, I keep talking to in Liverpool, who's great, I keep saying, have you got so and so, and I keep saying no. Um, so you've got new people to talk to, and they are related to you. There's no, no two ways about it. You are related to them, whether you like it or not. Um, you're using new data sets. I found my New Zealand family who I've been told it all died out. So I've had a lovely time looking at New Zealand. Um, and also I've been looking in the US as well. Uh, but I'm thrilled to get to my New Zealand. If only they would contact me, um, New Zealand writers. Um, learning new research skills, how to apply the information that you've got in front of you, how to make sense of it, triangulation, you will hear a lot about that over the next couple of days. And also as well, you're working on a very tight um, set of information. So it's making you use new skills. It's making you be strategic. It's making you analyze things much more accurately. Right, do I need a family tree? I'm talking, I'm preaching to the choir here. Um, you might have that lovely tree that's in the field, that's at the back of me. Whether it's still there now when I go home, I don't know, I live in County Waterford, but that's up there. Now you can see where we've got a really nice branch on the left, where we've done a lot of work with seven cousins, and the rest of it is all up at the top, okay? This will be of no use to you when you get your DNA results back, because most of your matches will be from 1870 down, which means that your living cousins will be in your third cousin, second cousin, first cousin bracket. Okay? So what you need is a lovely Christmas tree. So you need to be doing, while you're waiting for your results to come back, you need to be going and finding out what happened to those seven cousins who moved away, who got on the, you know, the £10 pound boat. 
you need to be looking for them because they're the guys who are going to be turning up in your matches database and you won't have a clue who they are. Okay? So if you do that work, I've had a lovely time working through all my lady cousins on that level, my third cousins. Um, they seem to have a very um, interesting uh, propensity for, um, shall we say, hospitality in different areas. I've been amazed how many people have got hotels and restaurants and never knew, but they're all there. So it's, just, it's, it's fascinating, just go looking what they got up to after they left you know, your family. So you do need a Christmas tree. I said, you've got to go back and look at your own tree. Start with your first cousins, my first cousins, and I sort of know who they are. I'm losing track of the first cousins' grandchildren, so. And they, see, if you've got a 10 year old or an 11 year old who's interested and they're testing, they're going to come up in your match. And if it's one of your daughter, your sister, your female cousin's children, you've got to know what the surnames are, otherwise, you won't know who they are. So, right, I'm going to quickly go through the test for family research. Okay, so it's only family research, nothing else. You know, you can, there is lots of other ways you can use your name. So, the first one is the one that everybody knows about, and it's the paternal descent, father to son. I call this the pocket watch inheritance, right? As I die, my son, I will give you my pocket watch and my will, okay? It's only the men. The men give it to the men, okay? Women, we're just bystanders here, although you will be amazed at how many women are actually admitting Y projects. Um, so, it and it's a sex chromosome, it's a Y chromosome. There is a, an Adam family tree, the human family tree, takes you back to one person, amazingly, or one group of people, and it will fit you on that if you are a man, okay? Um, and it's men only. Where does it cost, what does it cost and where can I get it? Um, it costs 169, this is all in US dollars because if you're ordering it from family tree, it's in US dollars and you do the um, conversion when you pay for it, okay? So you're paying it in dollars. Um, 169 to 359, and then what you do then is you get your kit match, the set match, have a nose breakdown when you look at all the surnames that you match, you should match, um, and then fine tune and go back to your Y project manager and say, right, like, how can I test again to get uh, a, a sharper result? Some people get lucky and they get cousins straight away, some people don't, but there are opportunities then for, for fine tuning your wine research and it's ongoing. Um, we're actually building the wine trees and you know they're watching them. The wine growth project hardly started on it. I'm um, five years ahead. If you're really interested in what wine can do, look at the McCarthy wine DNA project. Um, Nigel is roads, streets, houses ahead of everybody else. Look at the potential for that. Um, so, family tree DNA, there is an old database held in the US by Ancestry, and we keep asking them to let, it, let us have a look at it, but we're still waiting. But there is an old database based mothballed, and it's at a very, very low level. So, what I've said is follow your surname or, or your male line if you want to father to son, um, upload to a surname or clan database, it's got around that, fine tune your results. Join your HAPLA group, so when you get your, what your results, you will get a HAPLA group, and um, that's great. Look it up, just, just stick it in Google and see what your ancestors have been up to and where they come from. That's the screen. Um, and then join, I'd say, join as many projects as you can, and then don't be precious because we need your information. If you put one kit in one project, that's where it'll sit. If you put it in 20 projects, 20 people will get the benefit of it. Um, and also, you can take one in Ireland, fabulous. Mark Morris has an awful lot of work on this. Annals of the Poor Masters, isn't it? Spot on, they knew what they were doing. The DNA is matching to very, very early records. Fabulous. Um, and then, you, what you can do, if your kit is floating in the ether and it doesn't really belong to anybody, upload it to my search. But you'll get a link on that on your family search when you get the results. So that's the why. That's the one everybody knows about. This is the one that is going to get the most results for you as a family researcher. Potential results of all lines, on all lines up to seventh generation. My best matches have been at 1800, my fifth cousin matches, because I have the records. And three matches at 1800 that I can say, yes, I even know what marriage is. 
because I have the records. Okay, um, it's not you know it wasn't noise. It was it was spot on. Um, so where does it cost and what can I get it? it uh, where can I get it? Family tree DNA, family finder. Ancestry, it's the same test, but it comes down to Ancestry. 2, 3 and Me is more US based, but they are, people in, in Ireland have, you, have, have tested with them, and that also has a medical um, side to it. So, what can you do with the results? You can have a look at your list, at your, first, your second cousins who turn up, or your first cousins if you're lucky, and email them and say, hello, I'm a new match in your database, who are you? Um, or you can then get hold of that person if they want you in back and then find out who you both match. So there's a, a little tool you can go, go in and say, um, matches in common, and then you get a list of people who are related to you and that person, and you go from that same family line. Um, there are other tools available depending on where you go, but that's where you start. And then you can also take your raw data, which is your results, and you can basically put them about and put them in with the databases. Um, so if you go into Ancestry and you've got your raw data, you can go and um, put it into Family Tree DNA, but you only get a certain level of matches. And I'm a fan of these fifth cousins. How is evil, evil I am here on the fifth cousin? <laughs> but I like them because the way my research is going, I'm using my fifth cousin trees to help me because I've got very few matches further down here, yeah, close to me. So that's your autosomal ATDNA, fam Family Finder, Ancestry 2, 3 and Me. Right, now, freebie. I love this one. Everybody else is not mind, but I love it. This is the sex chromosome, the Y chromosome. It comes free with Ancestry and with Family Tree DNA, and you get a little X by the side of your match. This means that you are related to that person by a limited number of lines. Okay? So it gives results on the X chromosome, which is a female chromosome, and it's a blended inheritance. Okay? So men, you only get the, the, the mother's DNA, which is fabulous for you because you can go down and get all your X's and park them to one side and say, right, that's all on one side, and the ones who aren't uh, X are all on that side. So you can just split your results right straight away. Women, we've got a slightly more interesting path because we actually inherit from our father's mother's side and so on. So we, that we can access those records that we couldn't possibly access through normal means. So all our female lines on our father's side, we now have through X. Um, as I said, family tree and ancestry um, and also if you put your kit into gemmatch.com you'll get the next match there. So what you do is you go online and you download an X tree, family tree. So it's a family tree format. You can get it in fan and other different, I think a circular one. Um, and then you fill in your tree as if you were just writing your family tree out as usual. But then the X one, X matches will pop up by colour or by shape. And then you'll know which ones you're looking for. Um, and you can do this without using the DNA kit. You can just do it any way it's useful. Um, and it also, it's used, you use it to confirm unknown um, AD, TNA matches and family lines, so you can actually track. And I've actually got, I, I, I don't know how I did it, but um, I got an email from somebody who said, we match you. And it was in a, it was in a US database that I couldn't get into, but I found I matched her on an X, but nothing else on Jed match. So I thought, I'll have a go. And I did, I found her. I found she was only. She was a sister of one of my great grandmothers, and it was a marriage that I had, but I had nothing further back. But it was her sister, and she was descended from her, and that was through X, um, uh, just working through the trees, going back to the tree and, and looking at the, the match and DNA. Um, right, now this is the one that everybody gets confused with, and that's why I've kept it separate. This is a separate test. This tests the mother's inheritance, okay? So this is the inheritance from the mother's mother's line. It puts you on the migration, the fabulous, the human migration tree through the women. So initially seven, seven haplogroups were identified. Mine's U2. And um, the migration out of Africa, the, the women, well, the, the humans, 
travel through, but these are women who have had children, who have had children, and that we are descended from. So obviously some women didn't have children, and they died, those signs died out. Women, uh, men, you, you get your ex from your mother, but you can't pass it at all. Okay, so it's owned through the women. Um, it costs uh, 79 to 199 The only people who are doing it are family tree DNA, that's fine. And what can you do with it? Right, um, this is proving very, very useful for if you're doing discrete community research. So if you're looking at small communities, or if you're actually looking at your own family, it's fabulous, if you're looking at family research, if you plot your mother's side using um, maternal DNA, you can actually get, a, 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 you get what you need to get small clusters of um, uh, specific profiles. And uh, we've got the Swedish um, presentation tomorrow, I have on it. Um, information just come out when we, they found some new mummies in Egypt and they've tested the DNA, the DNA they tested was the mitochondria. Uh, mitochondria is also, it's also, um, shall we say, uh, it's been considered as being a factor in breast cancer. So you might, if, if that's in, in your family story, you might want to look at where that family tree is and what it's doing. Um, so when you get it back, I've got mine back, and I can't do anything with it because it is too rare. Okay. Um, you join the Hapla Group project, and so what I'm doing is I'm waving at people. This is the brick wall I had, who in who are living in the same area as my family maternal line in 1790. So I'm hoping to pick somebody that way. It is so rare that there isn't anybody. My name's matches are actually in Poland. Uh, well, I'm fascinated with it. I mean, it's just something that I, is going to fascinate me now forever because I need to know why this rural community in the middle of nowhere has got this very, very rare DNA. Um, so you can follow your, your, your daughter Eve back. Um, what I'm doing is I'm going to be uploading my raw DNA to a specialist database for preservation. So that, if, you know, and I've got the family tree to go with it. Off you go, you can have that for the future. I'm going to throw it off in a minute. Um, right, so um, the downside. Identity and privacy. You will have people contacting you about birth searches. You will have. I, my, my kit is attached to a lot of errant fathers. And I feel like putting a big sign saying, I am really sorry. <laughs> I have nothing to do with me. Um, you will have those. Your kit belongs to you. Your results belong to you. But you will have to read the small print before you send your kid off to find out where it is stored and where it goes. And they will try and get you to sign for all sorts. Um, NPE, non-paternal non or non-parental non problems. So you might find, I've got, one, I've got a few actually. You might find your kid veering off in a very strange direction. I've got six pages of Galway matches I've got account for. I've got four pages of Scottish matches I've got account for. They're not on the tree. I'm just nowhere near the tree. And they're close. So I don't know what the girls were up to. Anyway. Um, so you will have stuff that you can't account for. You have to follow it because it's yours. You can't just say they're not mine or got it wrong because they're actually yours. You have to take part. Right? You have to email people, you have to message people, you have to send your kids around, you have to take part. People will not come to you. I'm telling that now, they won't come to you. You have to pester. And anybody that emails you back, make a friend for life of them and keep, keep up that conversation. You've got to have stamina. I know for no set of matches when I first got my kids back. I got one set of match. I was practically stalking the guy in Texas because he wouldn't get back to me. Okay. You have to, you have to, it's a long haul and you have to be patient. Um, you if, should you rely on other people's research? And then the cost, it's an investment. Okay, so cheap. Um, okay, so the next thing I'm going to really, really harm, you have to set goals before you start. What do I want to find out? You have to be very, very clear about what you want to learn. And then you choose the kit. It's expensive. You have to choose the kit that, you, that matches your goal. You have to make questions. 
This is not a little parish register. This is a set of answers. You've got to ask it the right questions. You will get the answers. You know, why is my family in Galway in 1880? There's no reason why they should be. Why are they there? What's happening in Galway in 1880 that my family is still there? They should have all been related. Okay? Um, get, as I said, get back to that tree, get those gaps filled. Uh, and then ask around. You might find you've got some second cousin over in Australia whose son is quite interested and who's tested. And the, you know, the annual letter of Christmas is mentioning it. Find out if anybody else has tested because they, they will come up. And if they've done my testing, it might make sense to me to start with a why. Um, because you've already got people in that database. And then the other thing is strategic questioning, um, family testing to establish or locate a family of origin. Back to your tree, find out who you've got in common, the people in common there. If you've got a cousin who's slightly interested, or a great auntie, you know, a, a great auntie Muriel who wouldn't mind being tested, then go to them, get them tested, and then you've actually got a commonality. When that kit comes back, you know who you're looking at. And then, as I've said before, community group testing, clan testing, fabulous way to do it. And, and people will come, if it's a clan gathering or a surname gathering, they'll be interested. Um, what I'm finding is with my, just before I go, is sticky kits, this is what I call them. You will hopefully have somebody who's turning up in your group who is related to everybody. Oh yeah, I've got another 10 matches this week. And they've also got a full tree. So these people, you cherish them, you send them Christmas cards, you know, you, 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 know, you take them out for a drink. These people have got the information that you need. They've got, the, they've got the benchmark for your group, okay? They've got the tree. They know who the people are, and they've also tested. Sticky kits, love them, I wish I had them. And then, that's the last page, be strategic, clarify what you're doing, review your tree, decide what personal information to attach to your tree, make a list of questions, make contact, network, 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 network. Anybody you think might be slightly interested in your DNA, send it to them. And then treat your DNA matches as a repository, you visit it, okay? You don't spend the day there, you take the questions, you visit it and try and get the answers and then contact people and keep an open mind. Thank you very much. Now a wonderful introduction to the world of DNA and what it can do for you. Now we have a time for a couple of questions, so has anybody got a question? For Anne-Marie, we have here in front. Thank you, Anne-Marie. That was a very interesting talk. Can I ask? Can I ask you a question? Perhaps one stage back from where you were actually talking about identifying matches. If you haven't got matches, how do you identify targets and to, to te potentially test? And how do you persuade them to test? And who do you get to pay for it? Right. Um, if you do your own kit first and then you know what you look like. Um, then decide, like I did, there was a very long time for my dog. I, I, I was after my court clients, I wanted to find out, because my, my life was to court city, but I don't know where they are before that. Okay, so I wanted to find out, and I had a few options. Um, so what I did is I then buttoned the along to anybody I knew from court, and, and just, you know, put the word out. Um, you need to just network, throw it out into the ether and see what comes back. If you're looking for family, you've got to be careful. Um, the other thing I didn't say was, you may decide not to test because of your family background, but you can bet your bottom dollar there's a second cousin who's tested and somebody will be contacting your family. It is, uh, as we said yesterday, the genie's out the bottle now. You, you know, people in your family will be getting contacted, whether it's at a basic level or further back. Um, who do you get to pay for it? Um, the clans are very, the clans of, clans of Ireland are just coming on board with this now. The clans, and especially if you've got people in America, in the US, who've got a clan name, they're very interested. Um, because they, they, they want to get back here, they want to get back to the roots. They want to get back to, you know, where did my clan come from in Ireland? Um, and, you know, which branch am I on? And, you know, is there money in it? And am I on the royal line, basically? Um, so, it, you, there, will, there will be funding coming out. If you can start it off, money will come. You, know, you build it, they will come. Um, but just start with your own kit. Start with what you're interested in. If you are interested in your surname, start with that. Uh, because you've got enough information to play with a couple of years anyway. Um, 
So you're an exact match to that person. Email, email. It's no problem. Work well next door. Other question now from here from the Jim Holland. I'm sorry to eat. Sounds pretty bad. I'll try and do something, but I've been plotting my next uh, matches by hand. Would you say there's a tool to uh, display and extract bullets to present? Uh, yeah, if you go on to Google and, and um, Google X Family Tree, you'll get a, 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 a format. You get several formats. Pinterest have got a lot of them. Just look, just download it, and then just write the family tree into it. Ignore the colours. Write the family tree into it, and then you'll get a set of names coming through that are X matches as you fill it in. Um, I, I just do it manually. Manually, just write it manually. Um, and it can take you back seven generations, which is what you need for, for the ATDNA. Does that any really help? Yeah. Other questions for Marie? Great, okay. Well, we will call it a day there, but thanks very much, Anne Marie, for your talk. Um, it's very, very uh, interesting to, to, to have this introduction to DNA, and it's a perfect start to the day. So, thank you very much, Anne Marie Coughlin.